Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be catching up on my monthly favorites and sharing some of my favorite things from the month of May and June 2020. Um, I fully intended to do a May favorites um, and I'll kind of explain more of why that didn't happen towards the end of the video because um, it kind of goes in line with one of the items that I'm going to talk about. Um, but So I tried to not make it too long uh, but I have some entertainment favorites, some books, some food like recipes and then another <clears throat> random thing and then a priceless item. Um, honestly there's like no clothing and no beauty. I haven't really changed anything up and like I, when did I go back to work? I went back to work towards the end of May so for like a month I was like still working from home um, so not really changing anything up and I haven't really bought any like clothes or anything like that and then I haven't been this is the first time I've worn makeup in like probably since the last time that I filmed um, because if I'm wearing a mask at work like there's no point so <laughs> not really anything beauty or like skincare related um, so without further ado let's jump in. I don't have a lot to hold up this month, um, which like I guess for recipes that makes sense, but um, let's just get into it. And if I'm looking down, I am looking at my list. So the first one uh, is the podcast Cold. So it's a true crime podcast about the Susan Powell case. Um, so basically she disappeared in December of 2000. What? Two? Ah. Can't remember. Um, I'll put the year in here but basically it was suspected that her husband was responsible um, and then like it just like unravels from there. There's just a lot um, and it was really good. I haven't listened to a true crime podcast in a long time um, and this one hooked me pretty fast. It was pretty twisted. I remember I was like listening to it. I started listening to it being like okay you're gonna listen to this while you run because it will get good and then it will motivate you to want to run more but then life happened so I just ended up listening to it anyways but I remember like running listening to it being like ugh, ugh. it just got a little creepy but it was good um it's not really one um like I wouldn't say this is a spoiler because like if you know about the case but like it's not really one with like a happy ending but it is really interesting like to see where this like where the story of how everything happened goes um and stuff like that but it was very good and I found out from that from uh, Blair Lamb she shared it in a vlog that she posted a few months ago the second entertainment favorite is basically like Ben Platt in general <laughs> But then there's also, um, so he has a Netflix special that is his concert at Radio City Music Hall in New York, and then also his album Sing to Me Instead that I've been listening to nonstop. Um, yeah, so like I really liked him in um, the Pitch Perfect movies. He played Benji, and then um, I saw like Dear Evan Hansen, so I love like that. Um, Broadway soundtrack which he was the original Evan so um listening to his voice I love his voice um that there was kind of that and then I was catching up on a lot of armchair expert episodes podcast episodes which is Dak Shepard's podcast and he had Ben Platt on and then he was talking about how he um like what it was like to be on Broadway which is like crazy and then what he did after that which was write this album um and so then I think we started watching the Netflix special and I was like oh I really wish that I like knew the music that he was singing um and so then I started listening to the album and holy I'm obsessed his voice is amazing and like his album would be classified as pop but like he's just such a good singer and like the songs really do show off his vocal range um, some of my favorite songs, here let me check because I was totally listening to it while I was doing my makeup. Um, so Share Your Address is probably my favorite song. Um, and it was the song in the Netflix special that like everybody like got up and started dancing and I was like, whoa, what's going on? But I like that. Um, Temporary Love, Bad Habit, um, and 
older but oh, this is just all really good so i would definitely suggest it um and yeah it's just his voice is wonderful and i love it um so yeah just ben platt in general but netflix special and his album and the deluxe album which i have on spotify has some of the songs that he sang on like the live um recordings from the netflix special okay books i have like slowly been like increasing my books like i've been reading like crazy um so i will have a blog post about like the books that i've read so far this year because it's getting to be a lot that instead of it being one like really long blog post it'll be two like pretty long blog posts so um i have three books to mention the first one is the wedding date by jasmine guillory um so i think i saw this as a reese uh witherspoon book club pick or it might have been the sequel and then i went to like hold the sequel and realized it was the sequel so went back to the first one it was a cute just like romantic comedy um oh my god my nose it was a cute romantic comedy um so this guy and this girl meet in an elevator at a hotel um that ends up like breaking down so they're stuck there for a little bit and then he turns out um he ends up asking her to attend um his this wedding with him as his date and pretending to be his girlfriend um and then just kind of goes from there you probably pretty predictable but um it is an interracial relationship um like she's black and he's white um and but like her inner commentary i could really relate to just read the book <laughs> it was good and then there's a sequel that i have on my to read list um but yeah i really enjoyed it and it was a quick like easy read um so i liked it next is someone we know by sherry lapina so i've read almost every book by her um she wrote like the couple next door an unwanted guest can't think of any more right now but this one was like a residential like neighborhood and one person turns up dead and then you're trying to like figure out what happened and I thought I had it figured out I did not I'm really bad at it but I definitely enjoyed it and it was one of the ones so the app that I read all most of my books from um it's called Libby, which I've talked about in um, a blog post about how I read 37 books last year for zero dollars. So I'll link that blog post down below. Um, but it's through the library, so you rent the books for two weeks. But this one, sometimes you get like a it's your lucky day thing where you skip the line and you can get the hold for seven days. So half the amount of time, so the pressure's kind of on. But I ended up reading this book in like four days. So um, it was really good and I was hooked and I liked the twist I thought it was I didn't see it coming so um and then the last one is Becoming by Michelle Obama so this book I feel like it's still really popular but it was really really popular when it first came out that I've been on the wait list for like six months for um the through the library but I finally got it and I got it in May in the midst of all of the Black Lives matter movement um and so it was interesting reading a book from the perspective of a woman of color um and just her life like i'll admit i didn't know pretty much anything about michelle obama before like the, yeah before reading it and so it was really interesting to read about her life like even before before barack and before he went into politics and everything like that um and just like the motivations for the things that she did while she was the first lady and everything like that was really interesting but also like the things that happened while they were in office that like i remember but like from reading from her perspective like the book made me <laughs> tear up at least twice um but it was really really good and there's also a netflix special that i really want to watch which is probably just the story of the book it might be a little bit more i don't know for sure but um i want to watch that as well but i would definitely recommend that book and it felt pretty timely when it came in when i read it okay so those are my books now food so since disney has been closed they did open again on july 11th um but since they were closed i and we missed a trip our trip was rescheduled we were supposed to go at the beginning of may um 
wanted to bring some magic home so I did try some Disney related recipes. So the first one is the Ohana bread pudding from uh, and the recipes from Chip and Co. So if you've ever been to Ohana at the Polynesian, the dessert, oh my goodness. I don't think I've ever really enjoyed bread pudding, but like that, I like miss it. Like <laughs> I had it like four years ago almost and I still miss it. Like it was so good. And so I was like, oh, there's a recipe for that. I'm gonna try and make it and it tasted the same it was so good I was in heaven um, the caramel sauce did take like a really long time for me to get it up to the right temperature um, and if you are scared of that <laughs> just know that like you got it's gonna be really hot so just be careful um, but it was so good and I like want to make it again but like I can only imagine how bad it is for you but I made it it was really good and I will leave all these links to everything down below um, next is the PB&J milkshake uh, the peanut butter and jelly milkshake that they serve at 50s primetime dine-in um, and I love that like 50s primetime is the restaurant that I can go to without seeing the menu and be like I will have the chocolate peanut butter and jelly milkshake and the Caesar salad with the blackened salmon and so I made that into a meal and we've recreated that the salad like many times because I love it and I get cravings for it um, but so we had that as a meal I'll put in a little picture of that but I made both the chocolate version of the milkshake uh, with like chocolate ice cream and then just the regular with the vanilla. And actually the vanilla was better, um, but I really enjoyed it. Obviously like the quality of the milkshake is gonna be a lot better depending on the type of ice cream that we use, that you use. We used a really cheap one, but it was still really good, um, but really easy. Not many ingredients. It's ice cream, milk, peanut butter, and jam or jelly, depending on what you want. There's a squirrel outside. Um, <laughs> but it was really good and brought like, made me feel like I was almost at 50s prime time. Um, next is a snack that we uh, bought a couple times while everyone was working from home. Um, it's the like popcorn chips popcorners. So they're little triangles like Doritos, but they're like healthier. Um, so the variety pack is, what I'm talking about so it comes with small bags I think they're 30 grams um so they're not super high in calorie count and it's like still a nice serving um but it comes with three flavors there's like a white cheddar which tastes like smart food popcorn um there's a like kernel corn like sweet and salty that's not really like a caramel corn but it is it's really good and then just a plain sea salt so my favorite are the two like flavored ones i haven't had any of the plain sea salt ones um but they're really good it's like a healthier chip alternative um and then if you get the variety pack it's small servings the the bags so if you get them at costco are like massive so i know you can get the we got it from costco so i'll try to link it um i'll see if there's if it's on amazon or something like that i'll link that as well down below um and then two more things. One recipe uh, is strawberry shortcake cupcakes from Chocolate with Grace. So it was my sister's birthday in June and strawberry shortcake is her favorite. So I was making a strawberry shortcake for her and then we wanted to thank our veterinarian, um, the vet clinic. So I made some cupcakes to go with it and these were really good and easy and cute. They were, so it was just like a almost like sponge cupcakes and then just buttercream icing and chopped up strawberries that you put a little bit of sugar on so they get all like um juicy and sweet and you just put them on top so i don't have any pictures of them but i will put a picture in of what the recipe looked like but they were easy and delicious and like perfect for summer especially if you like picked fresh berries or anything like that mm, they were really good and easy so i recommend those if you want to make some cupcakes and then last isn't really like a food item but like a drink item <laughs> so this is my ridiculous water bottle head for size um i saw this from blair lamb as well she actually bought this um for when she was going into labor with her daughter um but i had like a water tumbler that was half the size of this and I just felt like I was filling it up so much especially when I was working from home all day so I wanted something bigger 
this is bigger. Um, so this is 32 ounces and I have only, it's only like sweat on me once and that was this past week when I was outside when it was incredibly humid. But otherwise it keeps the water cold and it doesn't sweat um, and it holds a lot. And the straw is flexible too so it makes it really easy to drink in bed. I just carry it around with me and try to drink a lot of water especially now that it's summer, so. Um, but it's a Bubba, I don't know if you can see, it says Bubba there, um, but yeah. I really like it and it's uh, dishwasher safe too. Okay, last category is priceless. So I'm gonna try to get through this um, without crying, but, um, if you have seen, I think it was two videos ago, um, we shared that we, my husband and I got a puppy, Luna. Um, unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to Luna on June 20th. And I wanted to mention her because I don't want, like this, it's been so crazy and I don't want to like, for, like I don't want to just bypass the fact that she existed and was a part of our life um, so there was something that was neurological that was going on with her we don't know if it was a birth defect we don't know a hundred percent what it was um, but for most of the time that we had her she was not a hundred percent healthy and we did everything that we could for her and she gave us everything that she could um, but we had to say goodbye to her and but like so I wanted to do May favorites because we brought her home on May 9th and I wanted to do May favorites and hold her up and show her to you um but then she got sick and so I didn't want to share something positive if we weren't sure that there was going to be a positive outcome um and just wrapping my mind around like working on a blog post or a video just was really hard and is still really hard um, but I'm doing my best so um, I'll put some pictures in of her but we loved her so much and she was the center of our world for the six weeks that we had her um, but it was a roller coaster of emotion of taking her to the vet clinic taking her to an emergency hospital where she stayed for four days um bringing her home and then her getting a little bit better and then not getting better um but yeah it's hard to explain but i just i don't ever want to forget her um and i don't want it to just seem like she's disappeared um from like my videos my life so if you follow me on instagram you'll probably already know and i have mentioned it on the blog but i haven't mentioned it here um so i wanted to do this i it like she she was priceless she i wouldn't give and like i wouldn't take give up anything to have had the time that with her that we did um and we're so grateful that we got to know her um and that we gave her the life that we could um it's just a really crappy situation um that isn't i don't think anybody's fault um but yeah so um she will always be our puppy and we will always love her and we will never forget her um and i'm probably gonna have an obsession with like moons now because she is our Luna. Um, we named her for the Harry Potter character, but um, just something to symbolize her. Um, so I've already bought some <laughs> moon related stuff, but um, yeah, I don't, it's hard. I don't know what else to say. There's not really anything that I can say that's going to make it easier. And it's been three weeks now and it just, I've never had to go through this with a pet. Like my dog is 16 and she, like my dog that is my parents dog that we got when I was young um and so to have to go through that and to go through it with a puppy 
it's just like the odds are just, like it's like you don't ever think that that would be something that would happen um but we will always love her and never forget her and she truly was priceless so i don't want to like leave this on a sad note um but I am doing my best and trying to get back into blogging and to have something to focus on um, because she was like where all of our attention was going because we were home because we haven't been going out anywhere and things like that. Um, so I am doing my best. I apologize if blog posts are sparse and like, like it has been for the past few months, but that's what I've been going through and dealing with behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, I just didn't want to like post anything not knowing which like how things were going to turn out. Um, but we know that um, we made the right decision for her and uh, we will never forget her. Um, so let me know if you guys have tried any of the Disney related recipes that I shared or if there's anything that you've been making during this quarantine in this pandemic um, and if there's anything that you've enjoyed during the past few months. Um, I will have everything linked down below and I will also have the coordinating blog post linked down below um, but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.